By the end of the video, you are going to be in a position to generate figures such as these, these, and these through trading. So this video is going to take you from a beginner trader to an advanced trader. I'm going to break down all the keywords in trading, and then I'll also share a trading strategy and then some live trading in here. So without any further ado, let's dive right into it. So trading is the exchange of currencies. We entirely make money by selling and buying a given currency. Now, it's also easy that we profit anytime there is a change in price, whether the price is going up or down in any way we are making money. And now these two changes can easily be determined by two types of analysis. One is called fundamental analysis and then the other is called technical analysis. So under fundamental analysis, we are using the economic data. We need to see what exactly is happening in a given country. So say we are trading the dollar, right? The USD. We might need to know what's happening in the US. Are people getting employed? Or could there be anything that influences the value of the dollar? So that's what we call fundamental analysis. And then on the other side, technical analysis is the use of the previous price data to determine what's going to happen in the next future. So we are just looking at what happened yesterday or the previous week or the previous month. So we are able to know what's going to happen tomorrow. Now, the most amazing thing about trading is what happens today is more often going to happen tomorrow. So all you have to do is you're going to come to your chat establish or draw any levels to see where the price could have bounced off just like what i'm going to show you and then you have it done now here are some of the most commonly used terms in trading now the first one is a currency pair now a currency pair is a combination of two currencies we can also call it a quote so an example can be say gbpusd or euro usd so basically a currency pair is just going to be a combination of two currencies now you can formulate as many as possible and now these currency pairs are also divided into three types and now we have the first one being the major currency pairs so these are pairs that include the dollar in them so an example can be say euro usd gbp usd or usd jpy and by the way these are the most traded currencies and I would recommend that as a beginner trader, you start off with this. Add Euro USD, GBPUSD, and USD JPY on your watch list so you can only trade those. And now the other one is the minor currency pairs. So these are pairs that are not associated with the dollar. An example can be, say, Euro GBP or GBP JPY or Euro JPY. And then lastly, exotic pairs. And these are just from emerging markets. So that's what you have to know about currency pairs. Now, the next one is leverage. You're going to find this more often. So once you open up a trading account, the broker is going to ask you to use a leverage. And by the way, I did a detailed video on how to open up a trading account somewhere up. And I'm also going to put a link just down where you can open up a trading account and you get 200 deposit bonus on any deposit that you make. So entirely, once you open up a trading account, the broker says, well, you can use a leverage. Now, a leverage is just the use of borrowed capital to increase one's buying power. Now, most traders start with less capital, say $100 or say $50. Now, with $50 in a normal typical market, you may not be able to trade instruments like gold or US 30, stuff like that. Now, once you have the leverage, now you can be able to trade such instruments. So the leverage is represented in a ratio. So an example can be say, one to a hundred so say your account is a thousand dollars and you use a leverage of one to uh ten to one right so that means the broker is going to get your trading capital that being a thousand dollars right times your leverage which is 10 and that means you can be able to trade with an amount of about ten thousand dollars now something about the leverage is the bigger the leverage the bigger the risk exposure so an example can be say if you are trading like on a hundred dollars and you use a leverage of say one to five hundred okay so that means you're going to get the one hundred dollars times five hundred as your leverage and that means you have buying power of up to fifty thousand now that means you're going to be tempted to open up positions bigger positions but in actual sense you are trading with only a hundred 
dollars so it's better to use just a moderate leverage it may not be too big or too small now the next keyword is bid price so this is the highest amount a buyer is willing to pay for a currency we can also call it the buying price remember we are buying and selling so there is always a buying price and a selling price and the ask price can also be called the selling price now we also have a spread now a spread is just a difference between the bid price and the ask price now this is where the broker makes money and i should be wondering now how does the broker make money in return so the broker is going to make money regardless of whether you take a loss or a profit it's just them taking the difference between the bid price and the ask price and that made the money so it's also important to consider this when you are choosing a broker the broker that you decide to use should have tighter spreads if the spreads are so big that means the broker is making way too much money from you and that's not a good thing in actual sense you should find a broker that has tighter spreads that are also favorable to you as the trader now we also have other keywords as going long which can also be called bullish so bullish is you buying we can say you are going long or you are bullish or you are buying they also have going short which can also be called bearish or selling that means you are selling again we buy when the price is going to the upside or you can easily say we buy low and sell high when i was starting off i had a problem with mastering this but at some point i knew okay once you buy sell land or any asset more often you're going to buy it at a very small amount and now you're waiting for the price to go up for the initial sell so the last two key terms in trading that you must understand is a lot size so a lot size is just a unit that you use in trading or measuring a currency so it's just a unit now the bigger the lot size the bigger the profit or the loss so an example can be if someone is using say a lot size of 0.01 and someone else is using a lot size of 0.1 or 10 this person could be in a position to make way too much money and still lose a lot more money as compared to this so the bigger the trading account the more you could actually be able to use a relatively bigger trading account now there is a very important key rule in trading and it's related to risk management you're not supposed to risk more than two percent of your trading account now that means once you are using the lot size you must understand that well this is how much i am risking and this is how much i intend to make so just go to app store and search out for forex calculators and you'll find a list of them so this can actually help you to determine how much money you must risk or which lot size you can actually use on such a trading account so a pip is the smallest unit of measurement in trading so an example is going to be i made say 20 pips trading euro usd or i risked say 15 pips or 10 pips on gbp jpy so it's just a unit and now once you have the pips and then the lot size multiplied you can actually be able to get the money that you either risk or make when you're trading on a computer it's even easier on the mt4 app it's going to show you how much money you are risking how much money you intend to make even showing you the lot size and pips so it's way too easier but then on your phone you could just have to multiply the pips and then the lot size and then you have the money that you intend to make now with that let's dive straight into the charts so for you to trade you need a trading platform that can be mt4 or mt5 then we also have what we call trading view and this is what we are going to be using so trading view is just more of a platform why most traders actually do the analysis though you can also use it to trade but the problem with it is it doesn't have access to many brokers as compared to mt4 why you can log in to as many brokers i'm just going to show you a quick one on the broker so on your mt4 you are just going to come and click on the section of settings and then there we go so we have this section here so it has your account name or any account that you decide to sign in so once you want to log in or connect any brokers that you want you're just going to come here and click on this arrow and then here we go so now we have accounts so currently i have two accounts one with triple fx and then another one is a funded account so right here i could just come to the plus sign here and then come to login into an existing account and then search for 
any brokers that you opened up an account with. Now, this is the advantage MT4 has over trading view on trading view we are kind of limited to the brokers that we have to use but either you can still do all the analysis on trading view and execute your trades on mt4 so i'm just going to show you a breakdown right here and how you can trade now as a beginner trader it's not a good thing to over complicate your analysis no you need to start small now there is a very very important rule that you must understand you must trade with the trend so like i said initially at the start that we make money when the price going up and that's when we are buying and then sell when the price is going down so it's your duty as a trader to understand when the price is going up for you to buy and then when the price is going down for you to sell so currently we are on gbpsd and we are going to apply the same rule right here now in this example we can see that the overall trend is the downside and now what comes into our mind at this point is looking out for sales so the biggest rule in here is understanding what the overall price direction is we can actually scroll through and see and now in this example here the price direction was to the upside now this is so so easy that you're just going to come to your charts and then look through just scroll through and you are going to easily establish the trend. Now, think about it. So without even having to think a lot or do a lot of analysis, in this example, with the market trend going to downside, I could easily be convinced that more often the price is going to come continuously down. Now, I haven't drawn any other levels or considered any other ideas, but that's what is in my mind. Why? Because the overall bias is to the downside. Now, once you understand that, the next thing is drawing any levels. You need to understand, could there be any levels that might have been respected or that may have been tested and respected multiple times? So you can watch out for those. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, this is called zooming in, zoom out. So I'm going to zoom in and here we go. So now this is how we look like. So I can just draw random levels. I'm just going to grab my tool here and then I'll have this, okay? So I've marked out this level because I can see that the price came. So the price came, hit this level and then it bounced off, right? That's how easy it is. And then I can also draw any other levels. Now, mind you, I'm just drawing these levels randomly. I'm not considering this and this and this, but then in a minute, we are going to extend those and, see, and then see. So I can also draw say one around here, perhaps. And basically, so those are, maybe I can also draw say one more. So I have about three levels now and you can play around with this and then see good so in this example i'm considering this you can see the price hit here and then bounced off so under technical analysis this indicates that well once the price hits this level perhaps it could do the same thing as it did previously but that's again under technical analysis so we had this level here you can actually adjust it to have better levels so now here we go so now it's a very better one we can see that the price it's over here and then it bounced off and then we can also see that the price hit here once so it hit here once and then twice and we can see the price hits goes over just that way and that's what basically we can look out for so in this example i'm just going to look out for buys now i can just go to h1 h1 is just a time frame I discussed that again in the previous video. I'm going to put the link somewhere up here. And that's how it is. So right here, I'm just going to take sales for the purpose of this video. So I can show you guys how you can open up trades and all that. But more often, GBPSD is going to come down more. I've not done a lot of analysis and having to check out for any levels. Though before you take a trade in natural sense, you might have to do more analysis. You can actually check out more of my trading strategies on the previous videos that I did. So I'm just going to come to my MT4 and here we go. So I'm just going to look out for GBPUSD. Um, so this is GBPUSD. 
the spread is five so come over here and click on the chart so we have the setup so just come over to the section of trade here click on trade and now this middle figure here is what we call the lot size we had discussed that it's important to understand the lot size that you are using so you know how much money you are risking in return so i'm going to use one for this account because my account is about sixteen thousand dollars so i'm just going to click that and then click sell and here we go now this is how my trade runs i'm actually going to add in one more and it's a real account so a real account has your account number and the word real but for demo account it has the demo flag green flag somewhere and by the way if you are still watching click the link just down fill in your email address and i'll send you something special so now i have the positions opened up and i'm just going to set a stop loss so in this example um say i opened up my trade right here so I could set my stop loss, say around 4170. So I'm just going to come over here, click on the pen, stop loss, and I'll say 4170. So a stop loss is just a level that is going to automatically close off your trade once it goes against you. Because at some point you may not be watching the market every time. So this level is going to close off your trade automatically just in case it goes against you. Then I can also set my take profit. So in this case, my take profit is going to be around 123.74. Oh, 123.074. And then there we go. So now I have both levels okay so this uh these levels look so big in actual sense it shouldn't be that big once you are setting these levels so your take profit should be bigger than your stop loss in any case because your take profit is the money that you intend to make and then your stop loss is the money that you intend to risk you can actually make as much practice using any trading strategy as many times as possible actually the more practice the more better you are going to become on these charts